I would like to introduce uh, space scientist Lucy Green. Uh, she's a sun expert, but she will talk about the moon. Uh, well, she's, uh, she's based at the Mullard Space Science Laboratory, and she will help us to understand more our neighbor. So please, Lucy. Thank you very much. This amazing image that you have been enjoying for the last few moments is the famous Earthrise, image taken by the Apollo 8 astronauts. They were the first humans to go into orbit around the moon, and they did that in 1968. And they were going on a journey, not just of exploration, but a dangerous journey that took them far away from the comfort and the safety of the Earth that we see so beautifully placed there. So as a space scientist thinking about tonight and thinking about the full moon party, I just started to think about the science of the moon and what it's like to be on the surface. So for the next few moments, I just want to tell you some of the things that I find fascinating about the moon. Maybe things you didn't know, maybe things you did know. They were all new to me, actually, when I was writing this talk. And um, yeah, let, let's find out what it would be like to go to the moon. So the, the Apollo astronauts left the confines of the Earth's atmosphere, but also the confines of the Earth's magnetic field. And if anyone's heard me talk before, you know that I'm completely obsessed by magnetic fields. They are everywhere in the universe, and they are really, really important. So I just have a quick movie here to illustrate the Earth's magnetic field. It's equivalent to having a huge bar magnet inside the Earth, but the effect is that it creates a huge magnetic bubble around the Earth. And uh, so here I've got the, moon, uh, the Earth in the center and the, um, the Earth's magnetic field. And the magnetic field is very important for us. It's invisible, but it does a great job in shielding us from dangerous radiation that comes from the sun. So I want to show you now just one of my favorite movies. Um, and has anyone seen this movie before that recognized this image? No, no hands are going up, okay. So what you're looking at is a starry background. Can you make up this white blob here? I hope you can, if you can't, make sure you can see this bit here. So this is a comet, and the reason I'm showing this movie is because outside of the protection of the Earth's magnetic field, you're exposed to a pretty hazardous space environment that's created by the sun. The sun has a solar wind which blows out electrically charged gas into the solar system. And, okay, the gas is invisible, but it shows its effect by what happens to comets. It creates the comet's tail, but it also can do things like this. If you watch this comet, you see material. Okay, so the sun is off to the right-hand side out of the field of view of this image. And you see the tail being disconnected from the comet. Direct evidence that out there, above our heads, tens of thousands of kilometers above our heads, is a solar wind that's racing out through the solar system at speeds of around 400 kilometers a second. It's dangerous out there. And when the Apollo astronauts left and headed towards the moon, they headed off into this environment. Charged particles bombarding their spacecraft and also bombarding the moon all the time. But tonight we're thinking about the moon in its full phase. So I want to show you a little bit about what that means in terms of its position relative to our magnetic field. And the first thing I need to do is show what effect this solar wind that's blowing from right to left has on our own magnetic field. So I said earlier on that we have this magnetic bubble, but the force, the pressure coming from the solar wind is able to deform our magnetic shield. And it squashes it up on the sunward side and draws it out into this huge tail on the night side of the Earth. And all the time we're spinning, once every 24 hours, inside this distorted magnetic cavity. Now the moon is over 300,000 kilometers away from us. So on this side, when the moon is orbiting around us once a month, it spends most of its time outside of the Earth's magnetic field. So most of the time, fully exposed to these charged particles coming from the sun. 
But when the moon is in its full phase and it's over on the left-hand side, it finds itself in the Earth's magnetic field. So I've got a movie to illustrate that. Now, I'm going to slightly contradict myself because I said that the Earth's magnetic field protects us from this solar wind. But actually, what we discovered during the space age, okay, so this movie shows the Earth here. The yellow field line, the yellow lines are representing the Earth's magnetic field. But what we discovered was that the Earth's magnetic field is full of charged particles that are even more dangerous than those that we find in the solar wind. And the different colours here show different populations of these charged particles. And if you look up on the left, top left, you'll see the temperatures that those charged particles have. So 12 million degrees. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. That's hotter than the surface of the sun. And it's approaching the temperatures in the centre of the sun. But these are particles, electrons, in our own magnetic field. And there's even uh, hotter ones than that. So the Earth's magnetic field, on the one hand, protects us from the solar wind, but on the other hand, is a dangerous environment full of high energy electrons that are raining through this magnetic environment all the time. And so I started to think about, okay, what are the conditions like on the moon when it's in its full phase and it's sitting in the tail. So you can see the moon as this sweeps around, you'll see the moon just about there. So that's where the moon is now. Around full moon for four or five days, it crosses through this tail of magnetic field. And as I was reading, I was finding out that these high energy electrons that fill the Earth's magnetic field rain down onto the surface of the moon. And they electrically charge the moon particularly on its night side. <laughs> and I have no idea about this, that the, that the moon is an electrically charged object, particularly around the full moon phase. So that, that's the first lesson that I learned, the moon is electrically charged. And then as I was reading a bit more about the spacecraft that have landed on the moon and the humans who landed on the moon, I began to find out that there were some strange observations that were seen. So first of all, okay, this is just a beautiful picture of the moon in its full phase taken from the International Space Station with a haze of the Earth's atmosphere on the, on the right-hand side there. But I wanted to show these images. These are images taken by the Surveyor spacecraft that landed on the Moon. They're from 1968. So the spacecraft is on the lunar surface looking towards the horizon. And it shows something completely unexpected. We think that the Moon has no atmosphere. There's a vacuum. But yet, these images show a haze um, around the times of sunset. So the sun has just gone over the horizon from the moon. Yet rather than there being a clear distinction between the lunar surface and the lunar atmosphere, there's this fuzzy haze. And that shouldn't be there. There is no lunar atmosphere. So what is causing that? And then I was reading that actually this is also something that was seen by the Apollo astronauts, and they made drawings of what they saw. These are some drawings from the Apollo 17 mission. And they reported, so you can just about see here the curved lines of the, the lunar horizon, and they saw these rays coming up again around the time of sunset. So just as the sun had gone over the horizon and the light was coming up at a very sharp angle, it was illuminating some cloud in the atmosphere of the moon. And so what I started to do and, and read about was putting together the fact that the moon is electrically charged with these observations. And it turns out that the moon dust that is thick all over the surface of the moon starts levitating. And it forms this, this temporary atmosphere on the moon. And so just to finish off, I wanted to try and sort of recreate that here. <laughs> I don't have any moon dust, unfortunately, but what I do have is um, some mylar, sort of silvery like the moon, there we go. And I'm gonna make it electrically charged. And things that are electrically charged are the same sign, so I'm gonna make this negative like the moon dust, start to repel each other. So I'm gonna try and make this levitate just like the moon dust does. <laughs> and that 
is recreating the moon on the South Bank. Thank you very much. <laughs> Do I hand over to? <laughs> okay, we can take a, a couple of quest, quick questions. Um, Lucy, really, will you take questions? questions? I, I do take questions, yes, I wasn't prepared, but that's fine. Uh, okay, okay, I'm sure there are some right. questions here. Okay, come on, you have very little time. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll test One here. <laughs> Hello. You, you had some one, a wonderful drawing of the uh, electric charge of the earth and there were three blobs ah. in that and I just wondered what they were all the rest seems oh, yes in earth. here yes there's a little sort of planet party going yes on. so uh, that's a very good point I'd sort of uh, forgotten to mention those so they show the orbits of the International Space Station in low orbit geostationary spacecraft at about, I think it's 25,000 metres, and uh, kilometres, and then um, these are the orbits of one of our satellites that we have up. Well, in fact, there's four satellites flying in formation they call cluster. So you've got, yeah, the, the astronauts, the geosynchronous um, spacecraft, and then the science satellites to study the uh, Earth's magnetic field. Yes. So it just shows that our technology is embedded in these environments which are very dangerous and full of high energy electrons. They've sort of picked up the term killer electrons <laughs> because they can knock out satellites, cause radiation sickness for humans in space and lovely things like that. <laughs> One more question for Lucy before we move on. Yep, quick, come on. <laughs> um, Uh, when they made, uh, I'll ask one. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. Is there any chance there is an effect of all these climate effects on the climate of the Earth directly? There, there is from the sun, and in ways we don't really understand at the moment, actually. Um, the charged particles that are shown in this movie have an effect not on the climate but on the northern lights. They produce the northern lights. So when these particles start to follow the Earth's magnetic field lines, they spiral into the poles and they, they energize the gases and create the northern lights. Um, but as you know, now, now I'm thinking that there's another answer to that as well, that it could possibly affect the climate as these charged particles come down, they can affect cloud formation, some people think. Maybe those charged particles or charged particles coming from the sun, but in any case, are broad brush charged particles. And if you can affect cloud cover, then you can affect, uh, in the long term, then you can affect climate. But other influences, other than the human influences, also come from the sun, but in very complex ways that I don't fully understand. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for warming us up with the sun and its relation to the moon, Lucy.